Happy Halloween to all the Narans on the go and in the know. October 31st, 2019. No hype, no BS, just the facts. Hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next post. I encourage you, knowledge is power. Stay informed and stay alert, and know that today, we are one day closer than yesterday. First article of interest, pressure mounts on Iraqi PM to step down. Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi insists on a political reconciliation rather than early elections, but the leaders of the two largest blocs in the parliament insist he must step down. Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi speaks during a symbolic funeral ceremony of Major General Ali Alami who commands the Iraqi Federal Police's 4th Division, who was killed in Salahuddin, in Baghdad, Iraq October 23, 2019. Reuters pressure on Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi increased on Wednesday as Shiite cleric Makada al-Sadr declined Mahdi invitation for a new alliance instead of early elections. The anti-government demonstrations, protesting a lack of basic services and high unemployment took Iraq by storm on October 1st and are now entering the sixth day of the second round with tens of thousands demonstrating in the streets. Both SADR and Hadi al-Amiri, two influential leaders who once supported the government are determined to take Mahdi down. SADR heads the major political bloc in the parliament, Sirun, and Amiri alliance of Iran-backed Shiite militia, al fada holds the second-largest number of seats in Parliament. The bloodshed one stop if you don't step down, I warn you that if you don't resign, Iraq will turn into Syria and Yemen, SADR said in a social media statement. I will not participate in any alliances or factions anymore. SADR statement came after Mahdi challenged his call for resignation earlier saying that political reconciliation is an easier solution to the current conflict because declaring early elections requires the majority of votes in the parliament, which is 165. The quickest way to replace the government, Mahdi says, would be an agreement by two major blocs on a new government. SADR, then called on Amiri, not to form a new alliance, but to pressure the prime minister to step down. Amiri agreed to help oust Mahdi on Tuesday, commenting in a statement, we will work together to secure the interests of the Iraqi people and save the nation in accordance with the public good. For some experts, Mahdi was calling SADR bluff when he invited them to collaborate. SADR calls AAM to resign but AAM calls SADR's bluff and says Ein, go agree with Hadi Alamiri on a replacement for me and I'll be out within hours. I think this reveals more than the PM should have wanted, Kirk H. Sowell, the principal of Utica Risk Services a Middle East-focused political risk firm, said in a tweet. This brings me to my final point, regarding the difficulties of replacing AM when he knows full well the 165 votes for a replacement aren't there and the last thing many MPs want is another PM chosen by Amiri and SADR. Once a sectarian cleric, SADR emerged as one of the most influential figures in Iraqi politics in 2018 as he rebranded himself as a populist anti-corruption and anti-sectarian leader, a move that helped his bloc sweep last year's polls. He came out in support of the protesters and deployed his militia on the ground to back Iraqis in the streets as he withdrew his support to the government after the first round of the protests began on October 1. At least 83 people have been killed in the second round of the protests that re-emerged on Friday after 149 people were killed in the first round. Next article of interest, Pope Francis urges Iraqi leaders to ear the cry of the people. Thomas D. Williams, Ph.D. October 30, 2019 to 25 Rome Pope Francis reached out to the people of Iraq Wednesday sending his condolences for deaths and injuries suffered by protesters and promising his prayers. Dear brothers and sisters, my thoughts go out to beloved Iraq, where protests this month have left many dead and injured, the pontiff told the crowds gathered in St. Peter's Square for his weekly general audience Wednesday, as I express way my condolences to the victims and closeness to their families and the injured, I invite the authorities to hear the cry of the people calling for a dignified and peaceful life, Francis continued, I urge all Iraqis, with the support of the international community to go down the path of dialogue and reconciliation and to seek the right solutions to the country challenges and problems. I pray that this battered people will find peace and stability after so many years of war and violence, during which they have suffered so much, he said, as Breitbart News reported Monday, 
anti-government protests in Iraq have already resulted in 75 deaths, and the Baghdad government has imposed evening curfews. The Iraqi military has deployed forces from the elite counterterrorism service CTS in Baghdad and Nazaria, cities that have seen exceptionally violent demonstrations. Over the weekend, the CTS surrounded Tahrir Square in Baghdad, where demonstrators have been meeting up, and soon after complaints of excessive violence were lodged against CTS troops. Our protests are peaceful, we only have flags and water bottles, but they keep firing bombs at us, firing tear gas at us. What have we done to deserve this? What have we done? The young men who died, what did they do? One demonstrator asked on Saturday night. Many Iraqi students joined the demonstrators on Sunday despite warnings from Prime Minister Abdul Mahdi. Abdul Mahdi promises of reform have so far been unpersuasive and protesters are increasingly vocal about wishing to bring down the entire government. Four members of the Iraqi parliament have already resigned and one of the largest parliamentary blocs is now holding sit-ins to protest Abdul Mahdi government, heightening the sense that the prime minister is beginning to lose the struggle to retain his office. Next article of interest. Iraq PM's future on the line as demonstrators smell change. October 30, 2019 Baghdad A demonstrator takes part in anti-government protests in Baghdad, Iraq, on Wednesday. Reuters. Baghdad The future of Iraq's embattled premier was in the hands of his one-time parliamentary backers on Wednesday, as they deliberated over his ouster after mass anti-government protests that have left more than 240 dead. Massive rallies broke out in Iraq's capital and south this month against corruption and unemployment, spiraling into angry calls for a total government overhaul. By Wednesday, demonstrators were waiting to see whether the first fruit of their struggle the ouster of Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi was finally within reach. Isn't it the people who have the power? Isn't it the people who put them all there? Asked protester Athir Malik, 39. He had come from Diwaniya, 200 kilometers 130 miles further south to join the biggest rallies so far in Baghdad's Tahrir Square, where celebration was in the air. They were joined on Wednesday by the United Nations top representative in Iraq, Janine Hennis Plassard, who called again for a national dialogue to unite against the perils of division and inaction. Parliament has demanded that the Premier appear immediately for questioning amid speculation he will face a no-confidence vote. Abdel Mahdi, 77 came to power last year through a tenuous partnership between populist cleric Mokada Sadr and paramilitary chief Hadi Alamari. The Kingmakers alliance has since drifted apart and protests widen the rift, with Sadr's Arun bloc, the biggest in parliament, endorsing the demonstrators. The hashed al shabi paramilitary force, whose political arm Fatah is parliament's second biggest bloc and is chaired by Amari, has so far backed the government. Several hashed offices were torched in southern Iraq last week, further straining ties, but SADR extended an invitation to a mayor late Tuesday to coordinate on a no-confidence vote in Abdel Mahdi and using Twitter to urge the premier to get out. Hours later, a mayor announced he and SADR would work together to achieve the people's demands, hinting he may agree to a vote on the premier's future. SADR took to Twitter again Wednesday to pile on pressure warning that keeping Abdel Mahdi would turn Iraq into Syria or Yemen, both engulfed in bloody wars. Meanwhile, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei told Iraqis they should find legal ways to resolve crises instead of hitting the streets. The people of Iraq and Lebanon have some demands that are rifle, but they should know these demands can only be realized within the legal frameworks, said Khamenei. Iraq's former Prime Minister Iyad Alawi shot back. Sowing fear while explaining there's no alternative is a false pretext, as rumors swirled that Abdel Mahdi's days were numbered. People rallied in Tahrir for a seventh consecutive day on Wednesday, despite violence that has left more than 240 people dead and more than 8,000 wounded. They have defied orders to clear the streets, the largest numbers yet tens of thousands flooded Tahrir overnight amid blaring horns, fireworks and loud Iraqi music. Demonstrators have shrugged off a litany of government reform plans and called for a new constitution, reworked electoral law and mass resignations from a government they see as corrupt. They should all quit and we should have a national salvation government, said Ali Khdir, 63. While the premier's departure would be seen as a victory for demonstrators, it would give protests a break but not break them, said Maria Fantapi, an Iraq analyst at the International Crisis Group.
even an election with the same election law would bring same figures into parliament and the same process as last year in selecting the prime minister, which puts you once again at square one, Fantapi said. Since the US-led invasion that toppled dictator Saddam Hussein in 2003, Iraq's political system has been gripped by clientelism, corruption and sectarianism. The country is ranked by Transparency International as the 12th most corrupt in the world. That means getting a job in government by far the country's biggest employer is often secured with bribes or connections. Anger at the state of affairs had been swelling among the youth, who make up 60% of Iraq's nearly 40 million people. Youth unemployment stands at 25%, while one in five live below the poverty line, despite the vast oil wealth of OPEC's second largest crude producer. Inequality and corruption have been major rallying cries for protesters. We want to take back everything they stole, said 55-year-old Hussein Nuri. AFP next article of interest, Iraq Prime Minister pressed to quit as protests clog treats. Under pressure from a growing number of protesters, Iraq Prime Minister appeared likely Wednesday to step down in the coming days credit hair al-Sudani Reuters by Lisa J. Rubin October 30, 2019, 42 p.m. ET. Baghdad under pressure from a growing number of protesters, Iraq Prime Minister appeared likely Wednesday to step down in the coming days, although exactly when is the subject of negotiations between two powerful Shiite Muslim leaders. In a letter to one of the men, the cleric Akhtada al-Sadr, Prime Minister Del Abdul Mahdi aid he would be willing to resign and call early elections, but Mr. Mahdi insisted that it be done according to the procedures in the Constitution. It is not enough for the Prime Minister to go to Parliament to announce early elections, Mr. Mahdi wrote on Tuesday, saying that there were constitutional requirements that the Prime Minister must abide by. The Prime Minister did suggest another path, saying, if the goal of the elections is to change the government, there is a shorter way to do it. He encouraged MRLSADR, who controls the largest bloc in Parliament, to work out an agreement with the man who controls the second largest bloc, Hadi Alamiri. More articles of interest to come. Hit that subscribe button and the alert bell so you don't miss my next post. I encourage you, knowledge is power. Stay informed and stay alert. Over and out for now, the Dinarayan.